Hi, my name is Nikki Gibson. We're so thankful that you're joining us today and tuning in from wherever you're watching from. If you haven't already, please take a second to like, share, and subscribe. We believe that God has a word for you, so let's jump into the message. You guys excited? I'm pretty excited, too, to tell you the truth. Man, how about that worship, by the way? Kimmy sharing a little bit of her testimony. I was going to say right now, I really don't even, don't even really need to speak because that will preach by itself. This is truly, truly, truly a house of miracles. I just want to welcome everybody, and I'm glad you're here. And I just first and foremost want to thank my pastors, Kent and Bev, for the opportunity that I have and sowing into me planting seeds years ago to get me to a point where I can do this. They saw something in me that I really couldn't even see in myself. And I just want to thank you. So if y'all would, please stand up and just, I just want to honor them. I know they're probably watching, so I'll stand up and give them a, give them a little bit of praise. We love you, Kent. We love you, Bev. I really appreciate all your mentorship and your friendship. Now, for me, this is kind of a big platform. Never really done this before. I'm kind of a, what I consider a preach from the porch kind of guy. That's a, lot of, there's a, that's a place where I go meet the Lord every day. Um, just really felt led to go out every morning and every night and just go meet with the Lord and kind of see what he has for me. So I'm just going to pretend that I'm on the porch talking to the Lord. We're just having a conversation, and you guys are right here on the porch, so we'll just call it a porch party. Um. My wife says, it's funny, she says, I am the king of one-liners. She says, I'm the king of dad jokes. So if y'all want to bear with me, I want to give you a corny joke to kind of get us started. So here it goes. Why doesn't Jesus wear chains? Why doesn't he wear jewelry? Excuse me. Why doesn't Jesus wear jewelry? Because he breaks every chain. (laughs) <laughs> she says, I'm, she's, she, she's shaking her head at me like, sweet Jesus, what are you doing? All right. Who out there has got their blue armband on? Anybody got that on? Everybody have that? If you don't have this, please, please go get it. We'll have these after the service. They're somewhere probably in the bookstore. You can go get these. They are a great resource, especially with this QR code. And it's a great resource to help you and guide you through the rest of this year. I mean, it's the Kent and Bev, this church has, pre- has prepared a multitude of resources for you to use and to utilize this year So and to help other people. So if you ha- don't have one, please go get one. And if you do, use it. As many of you know, last month we stepped into a new Hebraic year, 5784. This blue wristband is a representation of that. So I want, this year, I want, to show, I want to show you why it's so important and what it means for us. I'm going to give you a little bit of backstory. For the past couple of years, I've really met the Lord like I told you. I go and meet him in the yard, my Psalms 91 place. If you don't know anything about that, please take an opportunity to read Psalms 91. Go create a safe space for you to go meet the Lord where he can download and start giving you stuff and talking to you and spend time with you. It's a great place to go meet the Lord, your space. So the past couple of years I go, and I go and meet the Lord. He's given me the download for the color of the year, what it means, where we're going as a body, and what it represents. Now this year, just like any other year, I began to seek the Lord. And he gave me this scripture. If y'all would put it up on the screen. 1 Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. Now, I don't know about y'all, but that spoke to me. Um, I come from nothing. So for the Lord to give me a download and say, I'm his chosen people, I got to know that wasn't just for me. That's for every man and woman sitting in this congregation, every child, right, this, this in this church today, You are his chosen people. You are a royal priest, 
a holy nation, his very own possession. So I got excited. So I'm thinking, okay, God, that's great. Now I'm fired up. But what does that mean? Like, here we are. So my first thought, you always give me a color, so I'm thinking, well, what does that mean? Like, what color would I associate with a chosen people, royal priests, right, a holy nation? Well, the first thought that came to my mind was royal blue. I would think that that's what priests and um, rabbis would wear in that time. And so I thought that was my first inclination, but being as how I have a wife that hears from the Lord, and we are one flesh, right? So I'm thinking, I'm going to go in. God gives me a revelation. I want to share it with her. I want to be like, hey, this is what God told me, and I want to see if I got it right. Because, you know, if you're one flesh, he gives you confirmation. Like, oh, yeah, I heard that too. It's so good. Well, guess what? I walk in the house, and she says, I think it's purple or violet. I'm like, what the? Obviously, I heard wrong. I said, you just, just pause. I'm going to go back outside and talk to God because he didn't tell me that. And so I walk back outside, and I'm like, Lord, I thought I was right. I thought I heard you right. That just shows to show me sometimes we need to listen a little bit harder. So when I, I go back outside, and he says, you're both right. And I'm, I'm out here scratching my head, like, what in the world? Like, how can we both be right, God? It's, I mean, it, it, is, it either it is or it's not, you know. And he says, radio silence. I'm like, okay, I'm going to wait here until you tell me. So here we are. Well, he didn't tell me. I go to bed, and he, but he wakes me up at 2 o'clock in the morning. And he says, I want you to look this up. And it's the word tekhelet. He gives me this word. If y'all would, just, yeah, there you go. Um, for those of you guys that know me, no, I am not a biblical scholar. I had no clue what that means. I said, okay, that's, that's great, God. What do I do with it? Like, so I, 2 o'clock in the morning, I got up out of the bed, got my phone, start Googling, start researching. What does tech kill it? What does it mean? Like, and as soon as I read this, I was floored. I said, God, you truly are a God of miracles to take someone like me and give me a word that I have no clue what it means and then show it to me. So knowing that I would have no clue how to look for that, well, not knowing what it is because I don't study Hebrew. I don't know what that means. Like most of us, I just try to listen and do what God tells me to do. So tekelet means it's a highly valued dye described as blue-violet. And I walk in the living room, and I'm laughing. I'm like, <laughs> one flesh, right? Sometimes God gives us the things in part. He gave me one part, and he gave her the other part. The thing is, we have one heart. That's right, one flesh. Man, the Lord always does it for me like that. He'll give me something, he'll show it to me, and then he'll, he'll always confirm it in his word. Sometimes he'll confirm it with my wife. Even when it's something I really don't want to hear. He'll confirm it my wife, and she'll tell me, like, okay, Jeff, that is not what God said. That's what he says. You heard him. So she's really good about that. Now, this blue-violet held great significance in ancient the Mediterranean, Mediterranean civilizations. In the Hebrew Bible and the Jewish tradition, tekelet was the color of the clothing for high priest. This blue wool, known as the tekelet, was a hallmark of nobility, and in line with the tallit, that rabbis wore, and letting the Jew know that he is a member of God's kingdom of priests. So all the rabbis wore that on their tallit. I want to share with you why this is so important, and why this blue or blue-violet color is important for this season, and what it means for us as a people, as a body of believers. During this time, the Lord gave me another scripture, Romans 8, 19. You guys put that up? This excited me. You know, let me preface with one thing. When God talks to me, I get excited. It's like, for me, it's like, have you seen these videos with this kid going into the toy store and his eyes light up and he's so excited to see, what, see all these toys? I'm like that when I go and meet God. And I hope for some of you guys, you're all like that. I get super excited when I get to hear God, when I know that he talks to me and I'm humble enough to listen. For me, it's like the coolest freaking thing in the world. 
So just, just the fact that God talks to me in general, I'm very humbled by that. But this, this scripture got me super excited. It says, for all creation is waiting eagerly for the future day when God will reveal who his children really are. Let me give you some context on that. Kent taught me something years ago. When God gives you a scripture, you always want to go back and look at the scripture before that and then the one after that. But I want to go back and give this scripture some context. And it's Romans 8, chapter 8, 16 through 17. It says, For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are God's children, we are also his heirs. And heirs really spoke to me because, again, I came from nothing, so I had no inheritance. I don't know what that looks like. Probably had an inheritance of bondage. Probably had an inheritance of being poor, broke. That's what I knew. That's what I came from. So when you talk about I'm an heir and I have an inheritance, it just really kind of lit me up like, okay, what does that look like? So but this year, when I thought about that, it lets me know that we are in a position to take our position as royalty. And by his, and we are heirs by his spirit that dwells in each and every one of us, every man and woman, boy and girl in this whole entire building. Now, again, I'm going to go back to, I'm not a biblical scholar, but when the Lord gives me something, I start going through, down the rabbit hole, right? Because I want to know every freaking thing that I can find out about what he told me. I want to know it all. Like, I want to, you know, this, you study, the Bible even says, study and show thyself approved. So guess what? Like any good student listens to his teacher, I'm going to try to go and find out everything you know because I want to know. It's just like that hunger inside of you that wants to know what God is saying. So during this time, I started researching because I said, well, where does this dye come from? Like, who makes this dye? Like, where, you know, the interesting thing, it comes from a sea creature called a shalazon. Is that on screen? Okay. Don't really have a tag, don't really have a tag for that, but... It is, the sea creature is called a shalazon. And I thought it ironic. The kicker for that is this sea creature shows up once every 70 years. The funny thing about this was in 5783, the year we just came out of, is when they discovered that that was what the sea creature was. It's funny because this is a year that we get to complete the things that God has in store for us, right? We get to step into a new season. I found it interesting that this guy comes from a sea creature, and the reason for that is, and you guys might have heard Kent talk about this over the past year, our church as a whole, our area as a whole, has been battling the spirit of Leviathan. Y'all, anybody heard that? Right? We've been in this battle with this Leviathan spirit for a while. I'm going to reiterate kind of what that is. It is a spirit of confusion. It is the spirit of twisting words against one another. And it is the spirit of turning people against one another. Now, I don't know about y'all, but that is running rampant right now. If you turn on your news, you turn on the radio, good Lord, if you cut it on your social media, it's like you're just saturated with this spirit of Leviathan. How ironic is it for God to give us a sea creature and discover this sea creature to battle a water demon in the seventh year. It's the number of completion. What that tells me is he's given us power and authority to defeat the sea creature. It's the end of that. It's the end of that crap, right? We're going to defeat the spirit of Leviathan this year. We're not going at 5784, still holding on to that. We're not doing that. You know, the world is being encapsulated by darkness, but who are we? We are light bearers. God is showing us that we are his heirs and, and royalty, and we are called to move in authority. We as a body need to wake up and realize that we are also a holy nation. We are a royal priesthood. And when you realize that you are a royal priesthood and you are an heir to the king, guess what starts to happen? Right? When you realize that you have an heir to things you never thought that you would have in your life, you, you move from a different position, right? You walk different, you talk differently, 
and the moves you start to make in this earthly realm are different because you are, you're coming from a position of spiritual authority and not spiritual poverty. You have to step up and realize you have an inheritance and it's time for you to step into that. This is the season for that. We're not going to be tied to all this old stuff we've been holding on to for years. That's not who we're called to be. We're not called to hold on to an earthly inheritance. We're called to hold on to a spiritual heavenly inheritance. So I want to share a personal story with you. Uh, about five or six years ago, and uh, you have to excuse me, I may get a little emotional because God is really good, and uh, it really is a miracle. I, th- I, I want to thank Kim again for, sh- for singing that song and really just putting such emphasis in it for me. It really is a miracle for me to even be here at this point in my life. Um, so I was, about five or six years ago, I was in, in the bathroom shaving my head, um, getting ready to be ordained, right? And uh, super excited, I'm standing in the mirror, and the enemy right there, right there in the bathroom starts to deceive me, letting me know that, hey, who are you? Who are you to be ordained? Who are you to talk about God? You're not valid. You're not worthy. What do you have to offer the world? Who are you? And I'm sitting here and I'm telling my wife, I said, I, I can't go. I'm not going. I, who, what do I have? I have nothing to offer. I have nothing to offer people. And I'm at the point where I'm about to get ordained. Like I've obviously been following the Lord. But I've let, at this point, I'm still letting the enemy deceive me. Let me believe that I'm nothing. Like I have nothing to offer the world. All I have is a worldly inheritance, and that don't mean squat. As a good wife would do. I tell her I'm not going. She says, oh, yeah, we're going. We're going. Whether you like it or not, we're going. <laughs> this has got to happen. And I'm grateful for a spirit-filled wife. I really am. She has an anointing. And let me tell you why I say that. So she starts praying. She starts prophesying while I'm shaving my head. She starts giving me a word of knowledge. At this point in my relationship with my wife, there were certain things that I haven't, even at this point, have not shared with her about my father growing up or lack of a father. The personal part for me is she didn't know I didn't have one. I didn't grow up with one. I didn't know what that looked like. I didn't know what that felt like. So where was the validation I needed from my father? Again, you might excuse me if I get a little emotional. I never really knew what that looked like. I had no father, no male role model to really help guide me and tell me, you know what, good job. None of that. So I'm looking in the mirror and thinking, man, who are you, Jeff? Who are you, Jeff Digby? You're nobody. Nobody's told you that you could do it. Nobody's told you anything. She said, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. She says, what you were doing was looking for validation in man. You were looking for validation in this world when God's already given you validation and he's already prepared an inheritance for you. He's already prepared an inheritance for you that you don't even have room enough to receive. You wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for the fact that you were already validated by the Lord. You think you got here on your own? Newsflash, Jeff Digby. (laughs) You didn't get here by yourself, homeboy. Firecracker, right? You didn't get here by yourself. God has ordained you, and he's placed you here, and he's already given you validation. So you're going to get dressed, you're going to get your butt in that car, and we're going to go where you're going to get ordained. That's just the way it's going to go. And you're going to fulfill your purpose. Thanks, baby. While she's talking, the Lord gives me this scripture. And uh, it's Jeremiah 1 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. And I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. <laughs> it was so cool for me to hear that scripture because 
I'm going to be honest, I don't open up my Bible and read it unless the Lord tells me that he's got something to show me. So when the Lord gave me the scripture, I, I immediately went and read that scripture. And then he showed me, he said, I formed you, right? In your mother's womb. With my hands, I created you. I formed and fashioned you, and I knew you before the foundations of the earth. I already ordained you as a prophet. So what does that mean? What does that mean to you, Jeff? If I formed you in your mother's womb, that means I'm your creator, right? And if I'm, if I'm your creator, that also means I'm your daddy. And if, I'm your, and if I'm your daddy, you're an heir to what I have for you. And if you're an heir, that means you have an inheritance. So I got super excited. I, saw, I wanted to start running through the bathroom. You know, you don't want to run with a razor, but I was super excited. I started running, you know, running through the bathroom because God is showing me, like, hey, he is my daddy. He, I am his heir, and I've, got, and I've got the keys to my inheritance. But that's not just for me. That's for everybody in here. You already got the keys to your inheritance. And then while I got to thinking about that, thinking about, okay, the devil tried to chastise me, tried to play me, and thinking I wasn't enough, then I got ticked off. I was like, how do you think it's cool for you to come into my bathroom, distort my mindset, thinking I'm not enough? And then he said, then the Lord told me, he said, why would he not try to chastise you? He tried to chastise Jesus in the desert. He tried to make him believe that he could give him all this, all this worldly inheritance. But what did Jesus say? Check yourself, homeboy. I like to use my own analogy because that's my mindset when I think about Jesus in the Bible. He's like, check, check yourself. You're trying to give me something I already own. Like, why would you? Who do you think you are? That's a, you know, <laughs> a charlatan. You know, a liar is basically what the devil is. You can't give me something that already belongs to me. It doesn't work like that. So Jesus told him, you need to check, check out. You have no authority in my life. And I said, well, you know what? Then I got to thinking about why should I be any different? If he can try to chastise Jesus or check Jesus and deceive Jesus, why would I not think he would try to do it to me? That really fired me up because that lets me know I'm walking in the right path. You know what I mean? Really. So if you're getting checked right now, that means you're walking in the right path. If the devil's trying to deceive you, you're walking in the right path. Why is it so important to know what your inheritance actually is? Because you are royalty, a chosen people, a holy nation. Now, you can have an inheritance from the, from the world. You really can. But it's probably not going to look like what you think it looks like. You can have an inheritance of desolation, destruction, deceit, lies, and ultimately your inheritance is going to be death. Period. That's all this world has to offer. Sickness, disease, famine, sorrow, death. Nothing else. The Bible says the wisdom of this world is foolishness in comparison to what God has for you. It doesn't even matter. But I got good news for each and every one of you guys today. If you walk in your father's inheritance, you will have access to peace, love, joy, and the fullness of life, and, and access, full access to the armory of heaven. Now, I served time in the Marine Corps, so when I tell you, when I hear I have access to the armory of heaven, that means I can go to the armory and get any weapon I need to defeat any attack the enemy has to try to, to try to stall me or keep me from feeling my purpose and my destiny. So I got really excited then because I, I just like guns. What can I tell you? So I like having armory. I like having armory at my access. Now, the cool thing about that is when you have the full access to the armory of heaven, you have resources for a lot of things. You have resources for peace. You have resources where you can reach up to heaven and pull down resources for your finances. I don't know about y'all, but I could use the bill to get paid every once in a while. Lord, throw me some finances down here today. I'll take that all day long. Throw it, throw it to me, Lord. You've got resources for freedom from addictions. Anybody need that? I know that's right. And, I, you know, and I'm not just talking about having drug addictions or alcohol addictions. I'm talking about being, maybe being addicted to Facebook. How about that? Addicted to Instagram. 
something that we can put in the place of God that becomes an idol to us. We got freedom from that. Now, one of the things that really spoke to me is I got freedom to break generational curses. If that, ain't, if, if that don't preach right there by itself, I don't know what will because I needed the freedom to break away generational curses. On both sides of my family, they were alcoholics. Guess what? I could have fell right into that boat, and I did for, some, for a season. But I wake, woke up and realized that God had not prepared that for me. I have power and authority over that. I have power and authority over sickness and disease, addiction, any generational curse that may, that may try to impact my life, I have power and authority, and the buck stops here. Full authority in the name of Jesus. I got resources from heaven to pull down to heal, right? I got resources for wisdom to impact every avenue of my life. I got resources for every single thing. I got resources for joy. No matter what I'm going through, the Lord can give me joy. The Bible says, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And if I keep him with me at all times, I can walk in joy no matter what load of crap I'm going through. No matter what, what baloney the enemy tries to put in my path, no matter how he tries to tick me off, I can still walk in joy. I'll just smile and keep moving. And one of the coolest things is I have the authority, I, the authority with the resources from heaven to fight and win against any enemy attack the enemy has against me. Now, we're stepping to 5784, right? It's the year of the open door. And I found it really appropriate to give you this scripture. It's Revelations 3.20. Y'all would put that up on the screen for me, please. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice, and opens the door, I will come into him, and I will sup with him, and he with me. Now, let me elaborate a little bit on this. For all, most of my life, I'd heard this was a scripture that tied into unsaved, right? Jesus is knocking on the door, and once you let him in. But that's not exactly what the scripture applies. Now, it does mean that. I mean, you can apply that scripture to that. If you're unsaved and you don't know Jesus and yet he's knocking on the door, then absolutely, you sure can. Let him in, right? Let him change your life. But when John wrote the book of Revelation, he was talking about the lukewarm church. Not just unsaved people, but people that have been keeping Jesus at an arm's length. Like, they know him, they're saved, but they're not letting him move in their life. So I, wanna, I want you to imagine with me, if you will. Imagine being in your house. You got your front door wide open, but you have a glass screen door. You see Jesus walking up your driveway. You know who he is. You let him get to the glass door, you see him. You can even hear him talking, but it's muffled, right? You, see, you hear him knocking on the door, but you don't let him in. You know who he is but you hadn't fully let him in. Anybody want to let him in today? Anybody want to change the trajectory of your life? Anybody, anybody want to move into their authority? Anybody in here want to move into their purpose? Anybody tired of being beat down by this worldly crap? Really? I know I was. I'm tired of what the world tried to give me. It gives me just a load of lies and deceit and bull, and bull crap. I don't want that, and I don't want it for you either. So if that's you, and you see Jesus knocking on the door, you know who he is, you hear his voice, I just want to challenge you to take a step of faith, open up the door, let him in. Let him show you that you are, you are his heir. And you have an inheritance, but you have to let him in. you got to open the door. It's, now is not the season to, for you to keep Jesus at arm's length. It's not the season for that. Now is the season for you to let him fully move into your life. Let him give you direction. Let him give you purpose. Let him give you destiny, right? Let him show you that you have access, full access, to your inheritance now in the name of Jesus by the Holy Spirit. 
if that's you, and you want to move into your authority, you want to move into your purpose, and you want to receive your inheritance, raise your hand. Awesome. If, that's, if you raise your hand, I want you to take a step of faith with me and come down front. Come on, Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. Now, I've got some ministry team out here. If you guys would come up, I want you to pray for these people. And I'm also going to release a, release a prayer myself. But I want you to pray for these people, each and every one of them. I want them to know that they have power and authority flowing through their veins. It's literally in your DNA. Right? His words are literally in the fibers of your DNA. Just like David said, I've hidden, my word, hidden your words in my heart that I may not sin against you. His words and his power and his authority are already in your DNA. Let him move, right? Open up the door. Let him move. So, Father God, I just want to thank you today. Each and every one of us that have come to the conclusion that we're tired of keeping you at our arm's length. You have so much more prepared for us. You have so much more in our destiny, Lord. You have so much more power and authority to give us, Lord, in the impact that we're going to have for other people's lives, not just our own. You created us, but you knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb. You know the plans you have for us, Lord. We thank you for the things you're already going to do in our future, for this step of faith that each one of us are taking right now in the name of Jesus. As we leave here today, Lord, as we leave here today, Lord, let your presence saturate each and every one of them, Lord. Let them know they have not been abandoned. Let them know that they are each a child of God, a son or daughter of the risen King. Lord, let them know that they are somebody. They've not been left behind. That they have a royal inheritance. Something far greater than this world can even ever allow. And what a powerful thing that is. Thank you, Jesus. We just honor you and we give you all the praise, all the glory, Lord. Because without you, none of this will be possible. We just thank you for who you are. And we just honor you with your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Now, for those of us that are already moving in our power and authority, already know who we are, already know who we're called to be, remember this. I want you to carry this with you. Put it in your pocket. Carry it with you every single day. One thing, we don't just do church on Sunday. We are the church every day. We are walking, talking, living, breathing Ark of the Covenants. So we carry God's Word with us everywhere we go. So what does that tell me? That somebody somewhere is waiting for you to do what God has called you to do every single day. Period. The key is we just got to be, we just got to look and we got to listen. So I just know that God today is going to give you eyes to see and ears to hear the things he's trying to show you and the things he's trying to tell you. So this is the season today. We release you right now in the name of Jesus. We release you to go do everything that God has called you to do, to walk in your power, to walk in your authority, to take to step into your heritage, your royal heritage, and, and receive your inheritance now in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you one more thing before I release you. Because it's kind of my, my thing with the Lord. If you're ready to go move, I'm going to give you marching orders. Let's go punch the devil in the mouth. <laughs> Let's go impact the kingdom for the glory of the Lord. Be blessed. Have a great week.